Good evening, good afternoon, folks. Welcome uh, to the National Science Policy Network uh, coalition leader meeting for Science on the Ballot, one of our programs. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a chance to do our info session, so I'll begin with a brief recap about the program itself, go into some details about what we mean by coalition leaders uh, and sort of what we expect um, to be able to work with folks that are sort of identifying themselves as taking on um, some of the leadership and management responsibilities of these coalitions. Doesn't necessarily mean more work, it just means that your focus of your work may be more about monitoring and collaborating and arranging the group of people that are helping in each of the state coalitions uh, more than it means doing some of the actual legwork. Hopefully you'll be able to build your coalitions up and we'll talk a lot about that today. Uh, hopefully give you some tools that will help you find motivated people um, to do the work of the program together in those individual coalitions. So uh, feel free to throw into the chat if you have questions along the way, I will answer those, um, but we'll also have plenty of time at the end uh, for a Q&A. Uh, just don't want you to forget anything that you're chatting about. Um, so a um, quick overview about science on the ballot. This was formerly called Science Debate. Um, it is about uh, engaging and asking candidates, elected officials, as well as the public and the media to have more of a focus and more of a discussion around science policy issues um, that impact everybody's life um, ahead of the 2024 elections and as part of the 2024 election cycle. Um, so we are really you know, focused on uh, a nonpartisan effort um, to hear from candidates across the spectrum about how they approach and interact with um, what they view uh, in terms of critical science and technology issues. So, um, you know, asking them what they intend um, to use their role as policymakers uh, when it comes to these various issues. Um, and so that's very broadly what science on the ballot is, is about. Um, I like this graphic here showing some of the ways that we engage across the board with NSPN and our efforts in what Science on the Ballot does as a program. There is partnership among organizations, coalition and voter outreach, um, the state coalitions themselves as a sense of community, as well as different workshops uh, and things like tonight um, that will hopefully offer some training and skills uh, for folks that are involved with the program. Overall, uh, there's sort of three major goals of the program that we've identified now that NSPN has been involved for a few years um, that we really want to make sure are something that we hit on throughout the course of the program. The first one is to train our state coalitions uh, and the advocates, the folks that are participating in the program itself to make sure that you all feel comfortable uh, and confident and have additional skills and growth uh, as part of this program and this experience, right? It's very altruistic and it's great um, to have volunteers step forward and want to do this work. And there's a lot of motivated folks that want to be a part of this work, but we also want to make sure that you're getting something out of the experience as well. And so um, tonight we're going to talk about coalition building throughout the rest of the program cycle. You know, we'll talk about best practices in conducting candidate outreach. We'll talk about media and public relations um, and trying how to, you know, increase the impact uh, and reach of the work that you all are doing with candidates and campaigns, uh, as well as even discussions around direct voter contact and how do you talk to your average everyday voter about these issues and get them involved and invested. Um, so that's one component. The next sort of component is the engagement piece itself. Um, it is doing the contacting of campaigns, of candidates, whether they're already in office or running for office for the first time, uh, whether it's the candidates themselves, the policymakers or other people that are working on their campaign or that work for them, um, to make sure that they realize that there are dedicated folks in these states that have questions and want to discuss science policy related topics through the questions themselves, the, the questionnaire um, and uh, the work that a group of your coalitions does to develop the, the questions themselves. So it isn't just, you know, one person speaking for themselves. This is the voice of many coming together around these issues to ask very targeted questions about science policy topics. So the engagement piece is, uh, is another goal. And then through that work, uh, really elevating science policy topics broadly. 
Um, it's one thing, and I think the program has struggled in the past to be, you know, to have responses from campaigns and candidates. Uh, it's another thing to make sure that people are seeing it and reading it and having conversations about it to impact, um, you know, how people are discussing these issues to make sure that um, these topics are things that people feel comfortable discussing on a regular basis. And so through working with media relations, through partnerships with other science policy or community uh, based organizations, um, as well as just contacting uh, voters themselves through a variety of means to make sure that these are things that are on their radar uh, and things that they should be thinking about when they're making decisions about who to elect to public office. This graphic is a broad timeline of the program. So we are in that first uh, uh, period now of really recruiting our volunteers for the program uh, through next month. That's our heavy focus is making sure that we have lots of people signed up for updates um, people that we can share things like this recording with um, to make sure that there are dedicated, as many dedicated folks as we can um, going into launching the program. And then from July of this year through November of this year, those coalitions will determine their meeting schedule, how and when they want to engage with one another to develop um, questions for uh, the, the candidates and campaigns that they've identified in their states. So um, that will really be about both um, question development as well as identifying who you are asking those questions to. So there'll be several months of dedicated work and some workshops that will lead along the way um, to help you develop those questions and learn how best to reach people. Um, then sort of a longer period of November of this year through June of next year, doing the outreach itself, um, getting people to respond to questions, doing the follow-up, um, recording those responses, working with an SPN to collect and uh, publish those responses on the website. Um, all of the work of actually talking and interacting with campaigns is sort of in that chunk. And then finally, when we have responses, and this sort of overlaps with the work of campaign outreach, but as those responses come in, to make sure that we're doing the work of reaching out to folks so that they can see those responses, they can make their own decisions based on what they're reading, um, and to get as much media attention as we can locally, nationally, wherever, um, that, hey, these are, these are topics that aren't going away, and uh, policymakers and campaigns should be discussing them. That's a broad overview of our timeline again. Another thing that I just want to be on uh, people's radar because this we are heading into a presidential election year and historically science debate and now science on the ballot will develop a questionnaire for science and technology issues for presidential candidates. Um, and so we will do a lot of work at sort of the NSPN level of soliciting feedback on types of questions to ask for that. And so we definitely want our state coalitions uh, to be involved in providing feedback on what those questions should be. Now to sort of uh, get into today's meeting in particular and, and why you all are here um, is this idea of really establishing a strong connection with at least one person, and it can be many people, it can be a group of you, um, at every state that wants to participate in the program uh, for the upcoming election cycle, um, who are going to be the uh, conduit through which NSPN and the state coalitions do their work. And so, as I said at the very beginning, coalition leads do not necessarily um, have to do more work uh, than anybody else that is on a coalition, um, but they are focused on certain aspects of the work um, that your other volunteer members may not be as uh, invested in, uh, may not have as, as much experience maybe um, leading groups and doing some of that work. And so um, sort of the three main areas that we see for those that are interested in helping in this coalition lead role um, is to do the work early. Um, and the work right now is recruiting more members, uh, which is why the second half of tonight, um, really the bulk of tonight, will focus on this concept of coalition building and how can you form some partnerships and what is that sort of outreach look like to help develop strong relationships and potentially reach more people to join your coalition. Um, this role will also sort of be the arbiter of, of deadlines um, and keeping an eye on 
uh, a specific calendar of when are there specific milestones or tasks that need to be completed so that you make sure that people have time and lead time to complete that work and um, that we're moving along schedule um, since 2024 is gonna happen before we know it and we'll be in the height of election cycle. Um, and so being able to have at least one dedicated person paying attention to those deadlines and milestones. Um, and then also be the main point of contact between uh, myself and we are in the process of hiring a coordinator who will oversee this program. Um, and so whoever that person is that will really have a lot of ownership over those relationships. But you know, making sure that um, while we can and will at times reach out to everybody that's part of a state coalition, um, we do wanna make sure that there's somebody that we check in with a little bit more regularly. Um, and, and if you're interested in that, that that's one of the, the responsibilities that, that the coalition leads will have. And like I said, this doesn't have to all be one person, right? You can have a group of people that are leading a state coalition and they all may take different components of those. Um, I did wanna break this down into a little bit more clear responsibilities um, so that you're, you're sort of thinking about the types of things that we would want you to engage in. Um, so that first one, again, coming back to recruitment, um, really helping to get other folks interested in science on the ballot with your friends, colleagues, other groups that you know that may be invested uh, in this type of work or interested in learning more about this type of work um, so that your state coalitions have the capacity to do uh, some of the bigger uh, outreach efforts and some of the things that we're really going to focus on in a big election year with it being a presidential election. Um, we also will continue these uh, coalition meetings. We may change the time, especially when we hire a coordinator who will start leading these meetings. Um, but you know, we'll host at least once a month an opportunity for anybody in a coalition to get together and share progress, questions, updates, um, you know, things to consider, all of those good things. We'll share updates about milestones and the work that we're doing on our end. Um, and so, you know, while anybody can attend those, it's great to have at least one representative who's helping keep track of those milestones and who can kind of succinctly share some updates from uh, the state coalitions to attend those. Um, they also will likely be a main point of contact for the rest of the coalition to help people stay on task uh, with deadlines and milestones. And depending on the makeup of who else is in your coalition, you may have other people that help step into this role. But um, again, since the coalition leads will have their finger on the pulse of you know, when things are coming up, and when there are things that are sort of due back to NSPN so that we have enough time to provide feedback, uh, all, of, all of those kind of deadlines that come up, um, coalition leads will likely be ones that are checking in and saying, hey, how's the progress on writing that particular question or doing this research for uh, candidates to, to reach out to? Uh, how's that going? What support do you need? Uh, and doing those check-ins. Um, then working with me and our uh, coordinator when they come on board um, to make sure that those, you know, that, that we're getting information, we're giving information back to you. Um, so we'll, you know, likely start by checking in with coalition leads uh, if there's information that would be helpful and uh, also learning about other ways to support. So again, being that main point of contact between NSPN and the rest of the state coalition. Um, and then also doing some of the work of, you know, um, as your coalition grows and as people join it, maybe throughout the process of identifying where support is needed um, and where people's strengths are and kind of understanding the ebb and flow that, you know, there are going to be parts of this program that are really focused on more of a, a, a research, your candidates and finding contact information, all that. And there are parts of the program that are much more sort of people facing where you're doing contacting uh, and you're reaching out to potential partners and uh, kind of knowing and, and working with people's strengths to, to help in each of those areas as it comes up. <clears throat> Just wanna share again so that you all know that we will host a ton of information, resources, and archives of our training on our website. This is the uh, link to the Science on the Ballot page on the NSPN website, so scipalnetwork.org forward slash science on the ballot with dashes. Um, 
And, you know, we already have a bunch of information up there. Um, you're going to get more information tonight, and we will upload that to the, to the website after tonight's meeting um, so that you have access to all the different links and tools uh, that we use when we talk about coalition building. And we'll continue to update that as we go along. And so other things that you find useful, other resources that you may stumble upon, um, you know, let us know and we can, we can continue to house as much helpful content as we can for this program on the program page. <clears throat> so with that I'll pause just for a quick second to see if anybody has any questions in general about that broad overview or sort of what differentiates coalition leads from other volunteers in the state coalitions. So with that, let's get into what we really want to focus on and, you know, sort of for the first time in the history of this program, really being intentional and dedicating time to some of the skills that we hope will help with the success of state coalitions being able to, to manage uh, the, the uh, expectations of this program, the various things that you'll be asked to do throughout. And one of the things that we know is kind of the first barrier is making sure that you have large enough teams diverse enough teams uh, in terms of uh, not only sort of demographics, but also skill sets that can uh, help support the amount of work that needs to be done and also help represent a broader array of individuals who may be, uh, may be invested in this work and certainly will have opinions and insights that can be helpful in developing questions and doing the outreach itself. Um, so here are you know, uh, some tools, and I'll give everybody some time to work through these, uh, you know, tonight, but also these are all going to be available and uh, for you to kind of work on throughout. So I thought at first it would be helpful to sort of take a step back and define a coalition. And I should, you know, at, at the start of say, and you'll see it throughout the presentation, but a lot of this um, is stuff that uh, was developed in partnership with um, uh, students Lead Students Vote, SLSV Coalition. Um, they are a really great uh, partner organization um, that has a lot of experience in building up coalitions, particularly on college and university campuses um, to register people to vote. Um, and so there's a lot of alignment with um, this program in terms of wanting things to be housed more locally and having leadership at that local level, but also really dedicated folks that are um, going to take the work and see it through. And so um, you'll see their links throughout. Some of the resources I, I sh will share will be directly from them. And I encourage you all to, to check out the work that, that group is doing because it's, it's really powerful. Uh, and uh, it's been really helpful in thinking about how to support coalitions for this program. But you know, the way that they sort of define coalition, I think it's a good def definition, is uh, a group of individuals or organizations with a common interest who agree to work together toward a more common goal. Um, could be as narrow as obtaining funding for a specific project or as broad as trying to permanently solve uh, quality of services for people in the community. So it can be very narrow, very broad. And I think you'll see one of the things about this program is that we touch on both of those issues. We have sometimes very specific, narrow questions um, that are relevant to just a state or just a community within a state. Um, and then sometimes we have global issues that we are looking at. And so uh, these coalitions definitely span uh, the full breadth of that definition. Um, and so I think coming back to these goals that I mentioned earlier about the science on the ballot goals sort of at this broad national level, training for you all, but engagement and elevation of science policy ideas. So engagement of policymakers, the media, the public, um, elevating these conversations so that people are talking about science policy issues. Those are big major goals that everybody who signed up for the program is in some way involved with. But one of the real strengths of this program and one of the things that I think is really wonderful is that you all in your state coalitions will also have community specific goals. You all as leaders of coalitions, um, your volunteers and members of those coalitions will have specific issues that 
you are passionate about hearing more about from these campaigns. Uh, you may also have specific goals in terms of how the media talks about what candidates are saying about things. Or you may be really invested and interested in doing outreach to specific groups who are underrepresented when it comes to voting. Um, all of those different things could help inform and define how you build your coalitions, the types of people that you may wanna reach out to, the types of skills that you wanna make sure are a part of your teams um, in order to do the work and meet the goals, not only that we have here at the national level, but that you have individually within your coalition. So really one of the first steps that, that you should be thinking about um, as leaders of your coalition of like thinking about why you're here and why others may be invested in joining it. And so we'll, we'll get to some more detailed questions about that in a moment. Um, so thinking about this, look at some of these questions to help you guide why you in particular are interested in the science on the ballot program, why others in your state, in your community, might be interested in answering some of these questions may help you in determining the best way to reach out to people, but also what groups do you need to reach out to? Um, I think sometimes we can be limited in our focus and you know, NSPN as an organization serves a very specific group of people when it comes to you know, sort of early career researchers. Um, but there's lots of other folks who are invested in science policy issues um, or in you know, functioning democracy and, you know, efforts to get people engaged in the process of voting in elections that may be great partners to help meet some of your individual goals as a coalition. So, you know, you can think through this in terms of not only the quest types of questions you would ask and who would be invested in wanting answers to those questions, um, but also think about broadly, like, who would be interested in being part of this process um, because it's a very democratic way to engage with um, potential future legislators on these issues. So, you know, if there are urgent science policy issues happening right now in your state, um, those can be great things to think about. Um, you can think about, uh, you know, particular groups, especially if you're part of an organization that does work in science policy, or if you're part of a campus or university, where engagement around these issues is something that people are passionate about. You can tie into um, where those folks are wanting to see themselves. Um, you can think about what work are other people doing? Um, are there individuals who are wanting to do some of this like outreach effort, um, but are looking for a place to go? Um, to bring your resources together, um, are, are there ways that you can coalesce around some of these trainings and think about how could you apply what you learn in this program in other ways? There may be folks that want to be on board for that. Um, and then, you know, ultimately, the idea is that this is a long term process where the more we build up our coalitions, the more we engage with candidates and campaigns, the more we have uh, media and the public talking about science policy issues, um, the more successful we'll be in. Uh, making this a part of the conversation. Um, and so thinking about all of these questions could help you understand some of your specific mission uh, and goals as a state coalition underneath the science on, on the ballot umbrella. Um, so definitely take some of these, take some time to think about them. And they could be a great thing the first chance that you get to meet with other potential members of your state coalition to come to some agreement around these ideas. The other thing that you'll need to do, I think, is to reflect on yourself as leaders um, and your capacity um, to do all the different things that need to be done as part of this program and think about, are there gaps um, that I don't have or maybe strengths that I could use some support in order to really do well? Um, so thinking through the questions of like, right now, it may just be you um, in this room, but there may be others in your state um, that are interested in serving in a leadership capacity. So what kind of dedication are you able to give in terms of time uh, and in terms of energy into this? 
how does this connect to your own goals? Uh, are there learning opportunities that you're looking forward to? Um, is this just something that you're passionate about? And then what are your strengths? What are your assets that you bring in that you know that you could really help? Um, you know, maybe you're really good at tracking down contact information. Maybe you're really good at knocking on doors. Maybe you're, you're really skillful in dealing with the media. Um, combination of all of those, right? Um, but understanding what strengths already exist and then what other ones you may want to look for uh, in terms of building up your coalition so that you have uh, people that can help support across the board and you can kind of define your rollout from there. So these are some other questions for you all to sort of think about and reflect on as you're beginning to brainstorm how to do some outreach to potential co you know, partners, individuals and organizations to be a part of this coalition, the state coalition, uh, and do some of the work itself. From there, you now have an understanding of your goals uh, as a coalition. You have an understanding of what you individually are bringing to that. Um, now it's time to look at what other resources are out there. Um, do you know of any other organizations that do candidate engagement, voter outreach, that kind of work, operating in your community, in your state, or on a national level um, that either would have tools, resources, or people that you can connect with um, to strengthen the work that you're doing. Um, who is active in your own circles? Um, do you have friends, family, colleagues, whoever, that care about democratic engagement type work um, that are around your organization, around your campus? Um, do you have uh, a, a a department or a group or a student, you know, a, a center that does this kind of work? Um, do you have others that are supportive of this work that may not be able to join it, but they may want to share and spread the word and connect you with others? Um, these are big, broad questions. We'll get into more detail soon, but um, thinking about broadly, who are some of those players that you can start to, to want to connect with um, in order to, to engage and do this work? Um, and then also think about what barriers you face in building this coalition out. Um, is there limited interest in your state? Are there, um, is there a lack of engagement uh, within certain people or certain groups? Do you not have a lot of support at your home university or organization or job uh, in order to do this work on top of other things? What maybe is preventing you from operating at your fullest when it comes to um, building this coalition up? Uh, and doing this work. Um, and for those of you that have been involved in science on the ballot previously, or that have worked in other coalition sort of based programs, how effective have you been in the past? What has that looked like? How could you revamp it? How could you strengthen it? What tools, what resources, what things are missing? Um, what things worked really well and you wanna make sure that you replicate? Um, those are all questions that can really help you kind of decide how to build this moving forward. Um, and then you can also reflect on, um, you know, what is the best way to meet with this coalition? You may have people that you work with that you can meet in person and you can grab coffee or you can do, you know, you can do some brainstorming and planning in real time in real life. A lot of it's probably going to be virtual. So what does that look like? Is it all through email? Do you have a Zoom meeting every once in a while to, to, to check in and touch base with people? Um, how often do you do that? Are there other things that you would do to engage uh, with people that are a part of your organization. So those are some other big picture questions for you all to kind of think about. Um, so you have to start with asking a lot of those questions. You have to start with sort of addressing uh, um, where you're at currently uh, in order to get to the next step of coalition building, right? You need to understand your why. Why are you here as, an, as a coalition? What are the things that you wanna accomplish? What are your strengths? What areas uh, or gaps do you have that you need to fill? Um, what are some potential barriers? And start thinking about what are some potential partners um, to, to strengthen your coalition from there. So I'm going to drop in uh, a worksheet in the chat um, that sort of follows along with some of these questions. And so you can absolutely um, make a copy of this uh, and then work on it you know, as we're going through the presentation, um, you can uh, uh, save it for later, use it for other coalitions that you wanna build, whatever the case may be. But let me grab this link so that um, 
you all can make copies of this for your uh, particular state coalition and start working on things. So this has a recap of some of the slides that I've already been over. So you can come back and refer to that here. And like I said, we'll also have this as a recording, those kinds of things. Um, so you, you'll have plenty of ways to access that. Um, but as you scroll down and scroll through this document and whatever copy you make, um, you'll see some place for you to start filling out your ideas um, based on the questions that we've been asking uh, and that we've been thinking about. And so, um, you know, thinking about your overall structure as a coalition, earlier I mentioned that, you know, science on the ballot, we all have a connection to this overall program mission of catalyzing engagement with candidates around society's most pressing issues, science and technology issues in particular. Um, that is what this program is all about. So you you have that um, there. Oh, let me let me post that again. Thanks, Riley. Let me see. I may have been. Hopefully, you all can see that link now. Um, so you've got sort of the overarching program mission, but then you may have a state coalition coalition mission that's a little bit more specific or a little bit more tailored to your group in particular based on thinking through some of those questions of why are people in Iowa or in Virginia or in California, wherever you are, um, why uh, would they be invested in this work? What does this coalition really wanna do? Are there particular um, roles within government that you wanna in engage with? And so um, you can also break that out into goals for your state coalition. Is this an opportunity for your you know, volunteers and, and uh, participants to gain certain skills? Is it an opportunity to really talk about one singular or two issues that are so specific to your state? Um, and you know, that's that could be a state coalition goal. Um, and then once you sort of are wrapping your head around that, you can start to think about your coalition structure. Right now, are you the only person leading it? Um, do you think it would be helpful to have a team of people or a committee of people in that leadership role? What does membership look like? How engaged do you want your members to be? How often will you have meetings? Um, thinking, again, just with a little bit more intention than maybe we have in the past of, obviously, we will make space for uh, state coalitions to come together and do all of that work. But the strength of having all of you in these roles uh, as leaders of your state coalitions is that you can tailor the structure to yourselves in a lot of really nice ways. So thinking now how you want to structure those things uh, as we're in the recruitment period and as we're bringing people on board so that you can start off on a really strong foot uh, and, and make sure that people are engaging in a way that is most useful uh, for all of you. Um, so feel free, like I said, once you make copies of that to start writing in some of your ideas and this will be a great thing to go over when you have your first sort of, uh, you know, coalition meeting with your state um, around these topics. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, as you're doing that, as you're thinking through those things, um, these are some questions that are going to lead us into the next activity of understanding why we're here as a coalition is the first step, understanding what our strengths are and identifying what some of our needs are, uh, are gonna flow right into how do we now grow and engage with what we may be missing? Um, and so these again are broad, broad questions, but there's a, a space in that worksheet for you all to, to start responding or at least putting down some ideas for all of this. Um, and these just sort of help our thinking as we go into to trying to brainstorm who to reach out to uh, and how to do the work of actually growing the coalitions from here. Um, I wanna pause for just a second um, because I think now is a, a good time to talk sort of about timeline for these coalitions. So um, basically between now and, and uh, a month from now uh, in, in mid July, uh, when we have our next coalitions meeting as NSPN, that's sort of what we're targeting as the launch of state coalitions. We really want to have as many people engaged starting in mid-July as possible so that they can be along for the entire process of work. People can join after, but it's at that moment that we will share everybody who signed up from every state so that they can connect with one another 
and you can start thinking about how do you want to function as a coalition from here. So by mid-July, you will know who else from your state has expressed interest and signed up to be a part of this program. And so then you can use that information to start connecting and collaborating and thinking about how frequently you want to meet, who else is interested in leadership, what skills do you have, do you not have? Um, and so some of the some of these questions and some of these tools may be useful after you've already met with anybody else from your state, um, but some of them may also help you get people from your state to that first meeting to begin with. Um, so that's just a little bit of background about what to expect between now and, and mid-July, and I'll, I'll reiterate that later, but um, just want to let you know that these are strategies and practices that um, may come into play now and they may come into play at various points throughout um, the science on the ballot process because there's going to be plenty of opportunity to, to keep working on engagement and coalition building. Um, it doesn't just happen at the start and then it's finished. But getting back to these questions, so you know, many of you have probably done some sort of asset mapping in the past. Uh, or looking at partners. And that's, you know, essentially the, the crux of what coalition building is about. And so some summary questions um, to get you started on that journey is to review that vision, mission, goals of your coalition. You again have a national level uh, sort of place to start, but then specifically, why is your state coalition something that is involved in this process? Why uh, is this an important thing to have in your state? And I think every single state um, could come up with some really great answers for that. Um, thinking about the scope of your coalition, um, what are the things that you want to include, not include? Again, some of this is inherently a part of the process. We're talking about science and technology policy issues. It's very focused on those kinds of things and that engagement with candidates and campaigns. Um, but there could be other components that you do or do not want to have included in the scope of, of your coalition. And so what work do you want to take on um, versus what work do you think is more relevant for kind of broad level national work that we're doing here? Those kinds of questions. Um, thinking about, again, those gaps in your coalition. Are there skill sets? Are there voices? Um, are there underrepresented groups? Um, what uh, other organizations that may be really aligned but haven't collaborated in the past, what are you missing, uh, essentially? And so understanding that. Uh, and then just any other considerations. Are there any other things that you want to think about when identifying potential partners? Um, that could be that you know that, hey, in this rural part of the state, these one or two people or families or this business um, is hugely involved and influential. And maybe that's somebody that we need to consider having conversations with. Um, so it's collecting all of that information to give you a strong starting point. Um, so then you can break things down even more um, based on your responses to those questions, based on your brainstorming and your collaboration around the questions that we just went through, you can start thinking about who fills those roles, right? Who fills the gaps? What are some underrepresented voices or what parts, what communities or organizations have connections to people that may fit and fill uh, those gaps that we have in our coalition? Um, you can think about not just, you know, the organization and making a list, but why that organization in particular? What are they good at? Um, what is the thing that they are bringing to the table that's going to be most useful in joining your coalition? Can they help you recruit members? Do they have connections to campaigns? Do they have research already done on certain aspects? Um, can they just help you spread the word? Maybe that's maybe they're just connected in community can talk up the work that the science on the ballot state coalitions are doing. Um, also thinking through who else have you left out? Um, you know, going through a directory of your organization or your university looking at the different groups that exist, looking at what community groups exist throughout your state, um, thinking about partners, thinking about media and science journalists, you know, who's written stories about science policy in your state before that you could connect with early um, and explain this process to them and, be, and invite them along in the process and not just, you know, hope at the end that they pay attention. Um, who else would support this mission, essentially, is the question that you're asking. Um, and so you can think through all of those questions. 
Um, and uh, some of these uh, questions are in your, uh, uh, the link that I already shared, but I'm gonna share another link um, that breaks down those even more. So you can make a copy of this document as well. Um, let me make sure that my sharing settings are open. So this worksheet is more directed at helping you identify partners themselves. So the first worksheet is all about what is the coalition? What is it missing? What are its goals? How can you define that in and of itself? And again, some of that is defined through the program, but some of that you can bring your own spin to it based on the state that you're from. The second link that I've shared is more about, now let's get into the work of partnership mapping. Let's get into the work of um, summarizing those questions, but now thinking about what is our partner? What is a potential partner? Just at the brainstorm stage, who are they? What's the name, what, you know, what is their name? And what do we think they can bring to the table? What are their superpowers? And listing out as many as the, of those as you can. Um, and then at the end of this worksheet, there is a list, this is really campus focused, um, but I think campuses and universities are a great way to engage and connect with people. There's gonna be a lot of folks on those, uh, uh, in those areas that are interested in this type of work. Um, so if you yourself are not currently affiliated or part of that, find somebody who is to help you engage this work. Maybe that's your priority in terms of partnerships um, and thinking about the various student groups that they may have access to. Um, there's a lot of uh, sort of suggestions and ideas listed out in this document um, that can be helpful in brainstorming uh, who some potential partners are. Um, so take a look at that, save that in the chat. Um, and again, I will share all of these resources out um, on the website and via email for folks that missed uh, being here live. Um, so the, the, once you now have generated some ideas of some of these potential um, partners, once you've started thinking about um, who you want to out, you do the outreach to, um, there's an important step in, in this type of work where you're sort of identifying your priorities among those organizations based on um, how essential they are in helping you meet your goals and how much they support the work that you all are doing. So this is another great tool and resource that you can make a copy of um, and use to sort of map out. Um, you can do it virtually, obviously, because this is just a Google Jamboard, but you can also um, you know, do this in person and, and draw it on a, a a, a board or have a, a piece of paper that you work with. Um, but this is a chance for you to take the list that you've generated of potential partners um, and using this sort of grid of how important they are to get people in your coalition to meet your goals because of skill sets that you're missing or because of groups that you need to have access to. Um, how essential are they? How important are they? And how much do they support the work already versus how much work do you need to do to get them on board in the first place. And so doing this, you can split things up into four quadrants and see, okay, the people that are really supportive of the work and that are most essential to getting the work done, those are my priorities in terms of making relationships, bringing them on board, having conversations, carving out time to bring them into the coalition to be our partners. The other quadrants you can then prioritize. Do you want people that are already actively supportive of the work? Do you want people that are um, you know, essential to achieving your goals? And you might have some folks that aren't super high on either scale, but they're still worth exploring and maybe they just are a little bit lower in your list of priorities. So um, this is one way to break things up uh, and showcase uh, how, you can, uh, how you can kind of prioritize the different groups that you may generate when you're thinking about who to be good partners with. Uh, in the future. I'm going to stop that share just for a second, just so I can bring up, um, make sure that on the recording folks know what I'm talking about. So this is the, um, this is the resource that I shared and that you can make copies of, um, but this is the grid format that it looks like. Um, that you can then start taking your brainstormed partnerships 
uh, potential allies, whether that's an organization or an individual, and then mapping them out um, with sticky pads uh, and placing them in the appropriate place uh, on this grid to help you prioritize. And so this will go into uh, one of the next things that I wanna share with you as well, which is about outreach planning. Um, and so uh, since I'm already in this, I will, I will just pop over to this spreadsheet that I will also throw in the chat for you all. Um, but this is another uh, resource that you can make a copy of uh, and utilize once you start brainstorming your, uh, your potential partners uh, for outreach. This will have um, not just a list of who they are and contacts, but also help you develop a plan to make sure that you're following up with them. Um, and this is especially helpful when you know that you have uh, multiple people that might be engaged in this work. Um, and I think this is important enough work that you can, um, you want to spread this out and have multiple people helping with it. Um, and so this on the first tab has a breakdown of the different quadrants that we just split things up, higher power, lower support, high power, high support, um, et cetera, um, throughout those four quadrants. And then each of those are also illustrated down here. So that again, this is really about prioritizing and you can know that you know maybe quadrant B is where you wanna start and do a bulk of your work uh, or maybe it's quadrant A and then some of these others may, may come a little bit later. Um, but this way you can very easily break down and you can also break up who's in charge of what. You can have somebody overseeing each of these different lists um, so that somebody is assigned to uh, keeping the outreach and keeping that relationship going. Um, so if you go into one of these tabs, um, you'll see that it's just a contact log. And if you've ever worked in any kind of like, um, you know, customer management or um, uh, these kinds of databases or, or voter outreach, those kinds of things, um, this will look very familiar to you. But um, this is where you can describe what is the organization and what is, uh, you know, what is it that they do? Who is the point of contact at that organization? So some, sometimes it may be individuals, but sometimes you may have a big organization and you have to find who you need to talk to. What is their role within that organization? Their contact, um, so email as well as phone address, everything like that. And then you can also assign who it is that is in charge of being this point of contact. Who is it that should be conducting the outreach, following up, all of that sort of stuff. Assign that so that everybody knows who it is that they're responsible for. Um, and then you can also talk about like, what's our plan in terms of contacting them? Do we wanna rely strictly on email? Do we want to try and meet them in person? Uh, do we wanna try and call them? Um, and then it's also a form of tracking so that you can see when was the last time that we contacted this person? Did we get an answer? Um, are they more responsive on Tuesdays of the week? Uh, whatever sort of information that we want to capture about that so that we keep them engaged and keep them a part of, of the coalition itself um, and that they don't fall off or, or lose engagement throughout the way. Um, this this uh, spreadsheet will help us with all of that. So um, this last piece is really sort of like information that we get back from having conversations with them about their interest level, about their involvement, about how much we should uh, rely on them, how much we should reach out to them, or if it's if it didn't go anywhere, I mean, you may track down some of these leads, and it may not actually result in joining the coalition, and that's okay too. We can still learn from it and track it here in this document. Um, so uh, make copies of this as well, and use this for your actual outreach planning when it comes to developing these partnerships. Let me go back to my slides. <clears throat> And so um, this is just sort of an overview of what, what I was just talking about, but you know, you, you will prioritize your partnerships or potential partnerships based on the planning and the mapping that I explained in the earlier activities. Um, and then you will plan the best way to reach out to them. You'll do the research of who it is you need to contact, how to get in touch with them, who's responsible for doing it, um, what timeline will you work on, and then as you have those contacts, you'll keep things updated so that you have some longevity in this work. And what is especially powerful about doing uh, coalition building this way is that, 
regardless of whether or not you serve as leads for your state coalition in the future, there will be resources and tools for somebody to pick things up and continue forward. Uh, and there will be a dedicated list of potential partners and what our historical relationship has been with them and how they've worked with science on the ballot in the past in your state. Um, and so it provides a little bit of additional longevity and purpose uh, for these coalitions moving forward. Um, so all of those tools are at your disposal. Um, I don't see, um, you know, anybody that is like part of the same state coalition. I was going to build out some time um, to have folks get into breakout rooms and work on some of this, but I think since everybody's here sort of individually representing different, um, different state coalitions. This is all work that you can kind of take, reflect on, and start working on individually. Um, and, uh, and anybody that's watching this at home can grab the resources from the website or the email and start working away as well. And then when all the state coalitions start coming together and everybody who's volunteered from the state um, are having those initial conversations, you've got a lot of brainstorming already done and you've got a, you're getting off on a, a really uh, strong foundation for building these coalitions up. Um, so with that, I, I know that, that we're moving through things pretty quickly, um, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to stick around for questions. I do just wanna make sure that I get through explaining uh, some of the next dates. So we are in this first one here, doing a coalition leads meeting uh, and coalition building workshop. Um, our next big event is on July 18th, um, calling that sort of the coalition kickoff. That's when we hope to have everybody who's volunteered for the program on a call to go over what it means to be nonpartisan, to go over some of our big milestones and to start connecting state coalitions. So we'll get into some breakout rooms so that anybody from a particular state can introduce themselves, meet one another and start planning their next steps, um, as well as having kind of a similar a workshop to this of being provided some tools and some of that initial timeline and toolkit building um, that will be helpful as you're thinking about, um, you know, getting off uh, and running with developing your questions. Um, and then in August, we will focus on questions. What has been asked in the past? What are good approaches to developing these questions? Um, how can you think more intentionally about partnerships that may review questions? So um, we'll reiterate some of the things about coalition building, but think about who would be good partners in developing questions. We'll talk a little bit about um, presidential Q&A and what that will look like for 2024. Um, and so that will be sort of uh, in, on the horizon as far as next steps. Um, here is some contact information that again is our website. There's my email. Um, and I am very excited that, you know, hopefully in the next several weeks, we'll be able to introduce you all to a, uh, a, a coordinator who will oversee this program. Um, that will also be a great point of contact for you all. But um, with that, does anybody have any questions either about the resources on coalition building and the information I shared there or about the program in general? I have a couple of quick questions, um, but yeah. thanks for going all over that, Sam. Um, uh, just a couple ones. I guess the first would be if we know, um, I have a few networks I can reach out to just about the whole Science on the Ballot initiative in general. Where should they just go on to the website and fill out that volunteer form, or is there a place to actually connect with people in their state yet? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, if you are just talking at like um, partnership level with an organization, um, you can sort of handle that in that tracking document and outreach document. Um, once you start identifying individuals that want to like actually join your coalition and do the work, um, they can fill out that form. That is our like uh, main way of tracking who is involved at each state. And that's how we'll make sure that everybody from Iowa, New Mexico, everywhere, um, is connected with everybody else who signed up from that state. So yes, that that same registration form will be will be a perfect place for them to to meet. But um, you know, you you can also have the freedom to you know schedule those meetings, and you know if it makes sense to grab coffee with somebody from an org or somebody that you're connected with to chat about these things, that's totally totally fine too. Okay, yeah, I'm mainly thinking because there's a couple uh, things I could reach out to that 
have people from all over the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so it aren't, aren't in the States all begin, but could be interested in just the program in general. Yeah, no, that would be great. And feel free to Riley, any of those that you think it would be helpful to have, have me on a meeting with or, or connect them with me. I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, help support any of that. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions that folks have at this point? If not, I'm happy to um, give you all some time back. Um, If things come up, please let me know. Let me know if there are additional resources that would be helpful um, when it comes to coalition building. Happy to do uh, other opportunities like this. We obviously have other topics to cover as well, um, but uh, we are here to support. So uh, take these tools, we'll put them up on the website. We'll put a recording on the website. um, And as you're working through them, if you have specific questions, let us know. But I hope this helps give you some uh, background and some uh, capacity to go out there and grow who's gonna actually serve on uh, your state coalition so that you have as much support as possible for doing the work. But thank you all for joining tonight and uh, looking forward to seeing you at future meetings.